Hi, so your smart keyboard has stopped working. Why has it stopped working and how do you fix it? Hopefully in this video I'll show you just that. There's lots of videos out there that show various tips about command tab and also trying to fix the little three tabs that connect to the keyboard at the bottom. Um, people moan about the middle button or the middle pin being too low and, and suggest putting some solder on it. Uh, I've tried all that with no luck and like a lot of people the connection got very intermittent sometimes removing the iPad and reconnecting it to the keyboard would make it work again and often it would come up saying accessory not supported well I think I found out why a lot of these iPads iPad keyboards smart keyboards are failing and I'm going to show you how to fix it so first I would uh, check that these three little pins here are near enough at the same height and uh, quite often you find is these outer ones will bounce up and down quite nicely on the spring but the middle one won't. I've actually added a little bit of uh, blob of solder onto this one to raise its height a bit. Uh, nonetheless that can keep getting stuck down but um, that's not the problem. Sometimes it can be, sometimes it's not. Uh, I think what the problem is, which we can see, if we strip back this uh, cover, this actually came back fairly easily. Uh, started separating at the corner just with old age. Uh, this is uh, what three years old or something now, 2017 I think. And if you strip it back, you can see these three bands here. This is conductive tape that connects three pins over to the rest of the keyboard. And if you get a multimeter, put it on your own scale. You can see this is conductive tape because uh, we just put it on a couple of points. Over here, you can see on the meter, we've got about two ohms between those two points and so on. And you can check the connection between these bits of conductive tape and the pins. So we can put one on the bottom pin, one on this tape. You can see we've got a reasonable connection of 10 ohms or something. And the next one, the middle pin, we can see that we have no connection at all, not even in the mega ohms scale. Uh, the end one, let's check that one for completeness. And that is connected with quite high resistance actually. Let's just see, sort of connected. There we go, mm, three kilo ohms or something, quite a lot that one. Um, but the problem one is this middle pin. So we've got absolutely no connection at all. Obviously the keyboard's not gonna work if we've got no connection between the pin and the rest of the keyboard. And if you look closely, I think what we can see is the problem. So here, you've got some sort of uh, erosion, corrosion, whatever going on. Maybe humidity's got to it or something. But the conductive layer has like evaporated off, which you can test by putting a pin Let's go back to looking at our meter again. Put a pin on the rest of the tape. So on these bits that don't show any signs of corrosion, you've got uh, hmm, less than an ohm of uh, conductivity. But on that area where it's got a little bit green, you've got absolutely nothing at all. And if you look very closely, that area of green is now extending all the way across the tape. So this is where we've got a broken connection between the pin and the rest of the keyboard, I believe. So if we can bridge this connection, then hopefully we'll fix the keyboard. Um, to do that, we're gonna have to strip this rubber membrane back further. So something, some sort of scalpel-y thing like this would be useful, probably just could, could use an ordinary knife. Um, but I think we should be able to get in there. So let's try and peel that rubber membrane back. It's fairly well stuck down. Try starting from this corner might end up coming off in pieces, but hopefully that won't matter too much. But the looks of things, once you've uh, got one edge up, then it looks like it pulls back reasonably. Here we go. This will be very interesting to start measuring some resistances on this tape at different positions. And let's have a look at how that some, whatever it is, corrosion, evaporation of the 
metal conductor or something actually looks. Let's do some resistance measurements again. So these multimeters, dirt cheap, you can buy them from about uh, five pounds. Pick them up on eBay or Amazon. Just search for a multimeter. I'll put a link in the video description if you like, if that helps. So let's just check across the tape. Oops, let's put it back to ohms. We have a low resistance, something uh, near to one ohm. And on this section, okay, that's good, still conductive. And from there to there, we've got about 300 ohms or something. Not ideal, but probably enough to uh, still work. Now let's check this band that wasn't working previously and still no conductivity. So, and let's check it over here. Yeah, so across the band is fine, about an ohm. So all we've got to do really is bridge from here to here. Now there is conductive tape, I believe, that you could use. as uh, copper tape on Amazon and eBay and the like. It's adhesive copper tape with the adhesive also being conductive, which of course is critical. Uh, so I've uh, ordered some. Uh, see the buying links in the video description. Uh, but in the meantime, just to test it out and get something working, I'm going to use some Comla Garden strips of aluminium foil or aluminium foil, as some people will call it, uh, just to make the connection from one side of the keyboard to the other. Now you notice that I've stripped off more of the cover because what I did find is that uh, even though this was definitely a break, there was also a disconnection uh, further down on this other one over here. So let's get our meter again on ohms. Let's just get that in view. So make sure it's working. Okay. And yeah, so across that one, no conductivity at all. And so there's a few we can need to bridge. This top strip is okay. We've got from one side to the other, 130 ohms or something. So you can see as I've stripped it back, different amounts of the material came off. Both this sort of materially layer and the underneath more metallic looking layer are conductive. Um, so covering it in copper tape is probably not, maybe not quite as good as original. We'll see how long it lasts, um, but it'll certainly fix it and probably work for the next year or so. So, um, Let's lay our aluminium bits of tape down and stick it down temporarily. Got a bit of tape. I'm just going to use a bit of insulating tape, I think. Over to there. And what is critical is that we bend these joints the maximum amount they're going to be bent. Otherwise, when you do the bend, it'll just rip off the tape. Yeah, I'm just going to fold that aluminium or aluminium over a little bit more to allow the tape to get a bit more uh, visibility of the surface so it sticks down a bit better. No, I don't have to be too neat with this one because as I say it is only temporary. And again with this one, bend it the maximum amount, stick it down. And of course that top original tape has separated from the lower one. So we're not really sticking down onto much, but no matter. Let's uh, bend that again. Stick it over here. And there. All right. Let's just bend that a few times. And see if we are still connected now. From one side to the other. Uh, yes, we are at about one ohm, which is pretty good actually. A lot, a lot better than it was before. So let's just do the same on our bottom connection. Okay, that's the bottom one done. Just make sure that stays stuck. And then you bend it all the way over and again measure the 
resistance one side of the band to the other which is fine less than an ohm that's good appears we have a bit of a break on the top as well so let's do another strip for the top piece and I think this time I'm going to rip off that material piece because that just stops us getting a good um, stick of our adhesive over to this side and have an extra bit of tape so double check the resistance again from this side over here and uh, yes less than an ohm and we can also check from our pins so top pin to top pin to the right hand side at two ohms metal pin to the middle connector at one ohm and bottom pin to the bottom right it's also good so that temporary connection all seems to be good uh, so let's see if our iPad actually works now let's try the keyboard Bring up Safari hello this is a working keyboard and there we go that seems to be working uh, so we'll just do the uh, permanent fix with the copper tape when that arrives. But that is why your iPad Pro keyboard fails. And that's how to fix it. Hopefully that helps a lot of people because this seems to be a very common problem on these iPad keyboards. Um, possibly that uh, what I call a temporary fix of sticking down aluminium foil. Um, maybe that will last a reasonable amount of time. Probably better to remove uh, this loose material first, a bit more like this one. That seems to have uh, stuck down reasonably well. Um, it remains to be seen how long that lasts, but at least there is a solution. That saves you uh, forking out another $200. Um, so you could use double-sided tape to stick this cover back down again, or you could use a bit of spray on contact adhesive. So that temporary solution did work for a little while, as you can see going up on the keyboard um, it's a little bit intermittent um, so next onto the proper solution proper way of fixing it which is with this conductive uh, copper foil and it's conductive through the insulation so a couple of test test pieces here one just stuck on top of the other and they form a good connection between the two without any uh, extra measures like soldering the two together or anything so we're going to use that to make our connections uh, on the keyboard. So you can see I stripped off some of the loose material and got it all exposed, both ends. Pull this back a little bit further as well so we can get a good connection over this joint. There remains the possibility you might have a break on this one as well, but for the moment, I'm not gonna go that far back. If you still have problems, you might need to go uh, all the way back to the keyboard. So here's our tape. And what we've got to do is have um, a connection, just as a reminder, between here and here. Make sure you don't have any connections going across between these bands. Basically, these are three wires. So let's just cut it to length, and then we'll peel off the backing and stick it in place. And don't forget to measure the length when it's going around that bend. We also the length is going to increase as it's bent. And up to that here and then we'll peel the backing back to expose the sticky side and get that nicely squashed in if you find it's not sticking terribly well then it's probably best to strip it off and maybe clean it with a little bit of methylated spirits which uh, will hopefully help it stick. But uh, we're okay so far on here. Got a little bit of a twist, so just have to compensate for that. Bend it as you stick it down. 
If you don't do that, you stick it down on straight. Um, you have no kink here. What you'll find is uh, when you do bend the king, the when you do bend the keyboard, there's the risk of uh, either ripping off or snapping the uh, tape that you've put down. So it seems to be quite sticky. So hopefully that's going to be a good job. Give it a good push down. Particularly at these end points because this is uh, where you want the main connection. And to check whether we've now made a good connection, we can bring our meter back in and measure between, not on the copper, actually on the original piece of uh, conductive strip and to see if we made a good connection or not, which indeed we have. We've got less than well, around about an ohm, which is probably not too different to the resistance of the probes themselves. Uh, what's the probes? Half an ohm. Yeah, so we got, what do we say that was again? Wait for it to stabilize. 1.4 ohms, and there was about I don't know, 0.6 or something. So there's less than one ohm's resistance between here and here now. So that is a good connection. And we'll do the same on the other ones, and then the, and then we just got to stick the cover back down. Okay, so that's all of the strips down, and last little check of connectivity everywhere. Good. Yep, that's all good. It's all good. And now we use the double sided tape to stick the cover back down again. This is uh, the carpet tape. One section at a time. Hopefully this will make it a little bit easier if you ever need to take it apart again. Check for any broken connections. And I'm hoping this will be easier to uh, remove the cover rather than use uh, contact adhesive. But that is also an option as well. Just to allow me a bit of room for the next strip. Uh, just gonna stick that down first. Right, and now, try and keep this smooth. Give it a little bit of a pull and go from side to side. Trying to keep it straight because uh, the material will have stretched a little bit as you're pulling it off. So you'll probably get a few little creases. But uh, just have to work to try and minimize that as much as you can. So let's get the next strip down. Don't forget as you're sticking this down to bend your keyboard again to maximum angle. Avoid putting any stress on it later. I forgot to do it on that one, uh, but it does actually sort of stretch okay. And the important thing is the copper rather than the double-sided tape. All right, so continue doing this till we've got the cover back. Of course, you will need to trim your double-sided tape to fit on the end piece. So that's it all stuck down. Not 100% as good as the original, but good enough, flat enough. The other thing worth fixing is some people have reported that this middle pin, uh, let's see if we can get in there. Yeah, this, this middle pin here sits lower than the outer ones. They're spring-loaded pins that make the connection between the keyboard and the iPad. And indeed, my one was uh, sat too low. I actually already tried um, adding a little bit of solder onto that. And it still sits a little bit low. So I'm just going to add a little blob more. You, know, you don't want to melt too much of the plastic around it. So be quite quick, but also need to get quite a good connection. And that is probably okay. Now that just sits a fraction too high with respect to the two around it. Let's see if that will flatten down. No, nope. so what we'll do is just use a scalpel or you could use a bit of sandpaper or whatever, just to shave off a little bit of soldering for the top. That'll do. 
and time to give it a try. So here are the three connections on the iPad itself. Just make sure those are clean. So let's see if it works. Keyboard on, type in the search bar, no pop-up keyboard. Hello, this is working. So keyboard is working nicely. That's how to fix your iPad keyboard. The message that used to pop up in the past about an accessory not recognized, I deduce that that is due to the fact that you just got too much resistance in the connection between the keyboard and the iPad. The signals are getting corrupted and it's not recognizing it as a proper iPad keyboard, which is why it comes up with that accessory not recognized uh, message. Now with the copper tape, it was uh, working better, but I did find it wasn't working 100% every single time. So on a time where it wasn't connecting, I um, measured the resistance between the pins and the little strips of copper that um, we um, stuck down. And I found that at least one of the pins, the outer pin, wasn't conducting very well when I poked my probe through onto the copper. Um, with our meter, um, there was uh, a high resistance, like this in mega ohms again. So we might have a bit of a break between the pins and where the tape, where the conductive tape starts to show itself. So I think what I'm going to do now is to attach some little wires, very fine little wires from here, uh, take it through a hole in the membrane, and then we'll solder actually straight onto the copper tape. First, I'm going to remove a piece of rubber membrane so we can get access to our copper strips. The copper strips do seem to have stuck down reasonably well. Um, bits of membrane, bits of the fabric peeling up a little bit in odd places. Spoils the look of it, but uh, doesn't really matter too much. Most of the time you don't really see that. So what I found here is um, an old iPhone cable, one of these cheap Chinese copies that didn't work properly anyhow. And you strip it apart and see inside, you've got some quite nicely thin insulated cable. That's also very flexible, shouldn't break too easily. So strip that back and use these. All right, I'm just gonna make a little incision to get the wires through. Just about there. Doesn't have to be too long. And there we go. And then we can poke our wires through the hole. And we'll only have a small amount of wiring showing just from here onto these pins. The rest of it I'll hide under this uh, stuck down piece of rubber. Okay, let's tin our wires then. Need a fine tipped soldering iron like this. Need to try and do it fairly quickly. Don't leave too much solder on that. Clean your soldering iron tip as well. So here's the first of the wires lined up that we want to solder. Just get it in position. And as is the problem with uh, a lot of these soldering jobs, You've only got two hands, but you could do with three. So you just have to prop up the solder nearby, get the wires in position, and then try and quickly transfer the solder from the solder. Oh, that didn't work. No, that's gonna dry out. If you leave it too long, then you get a dry joint. So there's a little bit of a tricky job. You need to have a very clean soldering iron as well. Not particularly happy with that, but that might actually do. Soldered on okay. Might spot, we've got a little break in the insulation there. Um, that shouldn't matter too much, because strangely, the iPad case, even though it looks like it's made of metal, is actually non-conducting into some interesting, uh, maybe resin or metallic resin or something, I'm not sure. But uh, it shouldn't actually matter if we've got a break in the insulation. Let's try and do this other one. 
which is there. Now I've deliberately made a little bit of a mountain of solder on the top there uh, so that we can actually slice it off with a scalpel because what we want is the same height to all of these pins of course and it might be a little bit easier this time let's just use a little bit of sandpaper bring those down hopefully all to the same height you sort of have a metal scalpel something like this to lay on the top press gently on it and see if you've got all three contacts pressing onto the metal when it's uh, straight and I think that's probably good enough. Clean that off and then connect the other ends. And to get a good uh, connection onto the copper tape, I'm going to scrape off any of the glue on it and then just see if you can solder onto the tape before we join our wire onto it. And indeed we can, as you can see, hopefully there, if I just zoom in, you can see that the solder has taken to the tape and indeed the material underneath. All right, that's all three wires soldered in place. So for connecting the other side of the wires, I initially connected it to the tape very close to the bottom. But of course, the other thing you've got to consider is the flexibility of this uh, joint because uh, when the pad is closed, it effectively has to roll over like that. And some of these solder joints and wires were getting in the way and the double-sided tape was too thick, which uh, stopped it from bending easily and it kept on detaching from the iPad. So what I'm doing now is stripping back the copper tape. I will do this because we're now relying on the wires for a good connection to the pins just need to strip it back off this rolling area of the uh, the end of the cover so somewhere to around this sort of position is good enough and when we've done that we can then solder our wire just a little bit higher up then a uh, fair bit of the wire and the lumpy solder joint gets out of the way of the flexible part of the keyboard. So we'll just make our solder connections just past the joint. Hopefully now that bends rather nicely. Does seem to. Shoot the cover back. Keep those wires in place. Just roughly. Now we could, I suppose, leave it like that. Leave these uh, copper straps exposed which gives it maximum flexibility don't know how easily that bends all the way over let's try it with the ipad now at least it stays connected this time right let's now see how reliably it connects so still got the old keyboard there just give it a little bit of a shove uh, I guess those solder connections uh, instead of gold pins, not quite as reliable. That was uh, connected okay though. That's connected okay. Keyboard working. Let's try a few more. Yep, keyboard working. So that does seem to be more reliable than before. And let's just check that it folds up okay, which it does. It's now staying connected. I uh, might want to put a little bit of tape over those wires to protect them perhaps. But uh, that hopefully is a reliable keyboard connection. And that's it. Good luck with yours, you need a bit of patience. Uh, but it's worth doing, it saves what 
Are they £200 for a new keyboard? And it is a nice keyboard. What I wouldn't do is go out and buy one of these really cheap made in China keyboards, Bluetooth keyboards. Uh, bought two of these. Uh, within a week, both of them had packed up a lot of big banks of the keys started packing up, so a complete waste of money. Typical, uh, I'm afraid to say, made in China quality or unchecked quality. And also the keys weren't very good anyhow. A lot of these were uh, bouncing, so you press a key and you get two of the characters coming up, uh, which never happens on the iPad keyboard. Um, so yeah, poor quality. So for the moment, I'm just going to leave this rubber membrane off. Doesn't look too bad. Most of the time, it's out of sight. Uh, just gives it that extra bit of flexibility to uh, bend and allow you to connect to your iPad. Uh, if I can find some thin contact adhesive later, I may stick that on at some point. But uh, that'll do for now. Thanks for watching, and subscribe to my channel. You never know what other coming handy now DIY videos might be useful. Cheers. Bye.